Hello everyone, welcome to Cam Tai Handmade Creations and another tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to crochet a little girl's granny square crossover purse. Ooh, that's a lot to say. So as always, I don't like to dawdle, so let's get started. Hello everyone, how are you doing on today? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to work on this little granny square purse. So let's go over our tools first. I have a beading needle here. Now, I don't know where my sewing needles are. Please don't come after me. Um, I have to find them. This is the heart that I made from a previous tutorial on how to make a heart. And I have some pink yarn here. This actually is the wrong type of yarn. Actually, this was on a sewing machine. I ordered the wrong yarn. So, and then now I have two black um cotton five uh, linings don't come after me i know it's black i ran out of white and then i have my two granny squares here so i did about six rows of these granny squares and i made two of them so i'm going to take these stitch markers and add them to this to the front side so that i know what where the front side is so that i'm not sewing it backwards so I'm going to add these stitch markers here on each of them. And I'll be back. Okay, so now we have our two blocks here. We have our two granny squares here. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and add our linings on here. Um, I've already uh, cut them out. So now I went ahead and I pinned it to the back of my square here. I made it slightly bigger than the granny square because I want to come right to the edge to cut it out. I went ahead and put some pins in there so that my square doesn't move around as I'm cutting it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut around the edges of this square. I can't believe that you came into my life. You made me feel it's my turn you say you've always been a little bit shy but i can put an end to your fears let me show you a place where you go wanna move your feet until they start to be dj take it away tonight is all for you and me so Okay, so I got that taken care of. Now I'm just folding in the edges so that it doesn't fray um, as time goes on. You want to try to get it right below the first row of your granny clusters. Just make it as low as you want. You just want to make it so that whatever your little one decides to put in it, it doesn't get lost. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up and continue through this part. To my life you made me feel again now it's my turn you say you've always been a little bit shy but i can put an end to your fears let me show you a place where you go wanna move your feet until they start to be dj take it away tonight is all for you and me so Okay, so I'm putting my final pins in here so we can continue. So now we're going to go ahead and sew. You sew this however you like. I am not the best at sewing, so I'm just going to do a standard in and out. I don't know what to call it. Again, I'm not a seamstress, so I don't know the name of the stitches that I'm doing with the needle. But just do a standard in and out try not to go all the way through your stitch you just want to go to the back of the stitch so again i'm just going to speed up to get through this you do this part how um how you see fit and i'll be back okay so i've done both of my squares 
don't come after me with this sewing thing. I'm thinking about getting like a little hand sewing machine so this could come out a lot better. But if it was white and it would look so much better, uh, use some white. So um, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to bring them together now. That is why I put those stitch markers there so I can know where the foot part is. I'm going to grab my darning needle so we can go ahead and continue. And the way you thread your darning needle is you just put your needle in between and just snatch it just like I did just there. It's a lot harder to do it um, the way you would thread a normal needle. So now um, we're going to go ahead and start working on the corners, uh, working around. So decide where you want your opening to be and then go on the opposite end. Now you see your two clusters here. Each cluster has three double crochets there, right? So you're gonna go into the last double crochet of the first cluster. So the last double crochet of the first cluster, you're gonna put your needle in there. And we're just gonna do a simple in and out. So once you pull it far enough, don't pull your yarn all the way through. Make sure it doesn't come all the way through and just continue going in and out. And I'm just gonna weave in and out between the stitches. I'm going to skip over that chain in the middle and then move on to the next stitch. So again, you just sew this however you know how to sew and just continue on. I'm going to speed up here because this is pretty self-explanatory. I'll slow down a little bit so that you can see. I'll stay slow a little bit so that you can see but I'm going to speed up because this can be pretty tedious here. So just continue on with what you're doing and I'll be back. I can't believe that you came into my life. You made me feel again. Now it's my turn. You say you've always been a little bit shy. But I can put okay so i've joined everything together i'm now at the other side i'm going to go ahead and finish off this yarn and hide this yarn away so i can continue make sure that you're making your yarn nice and secure um, when you get to the end just go ahead and weave into those other stitches so we can make sure it doesn't come apart you know how children are they can be kind of rough so you want to make sure that this is good and secure and I'll be back. Okay, so I have my squares sewn together. And remember, you can make your grand square as big as you want. You can make it smaller if you want to add less rounds. I'm going to remove these stitch markers here. Everything looks so good. Everything is in place the way it's supposed to be. It's nice and thick. Um, so it'll hold whatever your little one puts in there. So now I have my 5.5 millimeter hook. And we're going to go ahead and do the flap, the closure of this purse. So you want to decide where it is that you want to put your stitches. I'm just going to start over here on the corner and this is so that it will flap over. Now I know I'm using some white, um, I'm just trying to have a different color, an offset color from this pink and this is a uh, like a hot pink. So take your hook and as you can see you see your three cl clusters and you see your three granny square clusters three on the left and three on the right so in that very last double crochet there you're going to put your hook in there and go ahead and attach your yarn slip stitch and then in that same stitch you're going to make a single crochet now we're just going to continue over and I'm going to continue for I'm going to make 16 single crochet so i'm gonna make my way all the way across when you get there you should be at the very first double crochet 
in that corner cluster of granny squares. So go ahead and make your double crochets, I mean your single crochets all the way across. Again, you can make more stitches if you want to. Um, I'm just telling you what I'm making. So I'm doing 16 across and then I'll be back. Okay, so now I'm at the end of my row and I'm at that last single crochet, which is the double crochet from the corner cluster from the previous row. So now I'm counting my stitches and I have 16 going across. I'm gonna do a few more rows of this double crochet and then I will come back. Remember to chain one and then turn and make another row and I'll be back. Okay, so I've done about four rows of this single crochet. I'm going to go ahead and chain one and turn. We're going to decrease now because I want it to come inward. So the way that you decrease, we're going to do a single crochet decrease. So do not yarn over. Go into your stitch. Pull up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. Immediately go into the next stitch. Yarn over. Pull up a loop. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. And that is a decrease so now we're going to continue on and making our single crochets across then when we get to the other end we will decrease again so when you have two stitches left two single crochets left you're going to go ahead and do a decrease in that section I'll show you that in a minute okay so now we're decreasing again go into the stitch Yarn over, pull up a loop, go into your next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. That is a single crochet decrease. So you keep doing this back and forth. This next row is just going to be a row of single crochets. The next row you will decrease and so forth. So you're going to decrease every other row. So you do one row of stitches, do a decrease in the next row and do another row of stitches decreasing as you go along you can decrease as far as you want to but I'm going to continue and I will be back I can't believe that you came into my life you made me feel again now it's my turn you say you've always been a little bit shy but I can put an end to your fears let me show you a place Where you gon' wanna move your feet Until they start to be DJ take it away Tonight is Okay, so we have our, all of our rows here Now you just wanna test it out to see how far down you've come with your rows <clears throat> If you wanna come down more, you can I think I will do that. I'm going to do that off camera. I'm going to cut them down some more and decrease a little bit more. Uh, so I will be back when I'm done with that. Okay, so I'm at the end and I have eight single crochets going across after all of my decreases. Now we're going to chain one and turn. And we're going to make the hole for our button. So you're going to single crochet three across. Chain four, skip two single crochets, and then make three single crochets across. Now, when you've done that, go ahead and test your button out. You want to make sure that your button slides in and out, not too loose. And so I'm seeing here that it's kind of loose. So I don't want that to be, I don't want it to be too loose and I don't want it to be too tight. But I want it to be enough so that little hands can unbutton and button it. So I'm going to come out to about two chains. And go back in and make those three single crochets again. And then now I'm going to test my button. And so it slides in easily i'm just I have butter fingers here it slides in easily so it works for little hands so we're going to continue on i'm going to cut this piece off here 
so that we can um, weave this in. And again, if you want to do a granny square for this flap, you can do that. That is completely up to you. I just did a quick single crochet just to show you how to make this flap. And then you go from there. Okay, so I'm just threading my darning needle here. I'm going to go ahead and sew this in. I usually come down through the side. And make sure you that you pull it good so that it rounds the corner. The way that you pull it, you want to make sure that it's rounding that corner there. And just continue on. I usually go in between stitches. Make sure you go in the back of the stitch and not all the way through. Don't do like a crazy zigzag or anything. Well, you can do a zigzag, but you just want to make sure that you're not seeing that line as you're making, as you're weaving this in. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll be back. All right, let's snip this off and go ahead and work our button here. So now we're going to add our button. I'm going to remove this stitch marker here. Uh, it's no longer needed. Now I'm just measuring to see where I want to put this button. So of course you want to put the button where in a place that uh, so you can bring your loop around it. So the little one can bring her loop around it and tighten it up and close it off. So we're going to take care of that. I'm going to show you how to do this if you do not have a darning needle or if you have a darning needle that is too big for these holes. So let me show you how I did that. So I grabbed a 1.75 millimeter hook and I'm going to use that to go through the holes of my button. So just grab your, your, your hook. Put it into the hole of the button put it around that yarn and go ahead and pull it through now i'm gonna tell you it's not gonna always be perfect you know the string might get a little bit caught up or whatever the case may be but it will be unnoticed so i'm going to show you what happens right here it's going to happen so i'm just going to go ahead and pull that through and you see how it got caught up a little bit, but that's okay. You can fix it. It's not a big deal. It will not be noticed. So now I have my strings through the other side of my button. I'm going to go ahead and add the button here. We're doing this with this way because remember we have the lining there. So this is, I'm sure you can find another way to do it, but this is what's easy for me. So I'm just lining that up to make sure that it's lined up with the hole I do need to come up just a tad bit so I'm gonna put it in and I'm gonna grab my hook and just go ahead and weave or pull those yarn, those pieces of yarn through and this part is pretty simple go ahead and grab it and pull it through now we're gonna tie a knot on one side you see how it's there and it's all going to come together once you pull so now go ahead and make a knot and pull it good and tight and the button just lines up like it's supposed to in between those stitches now I'm going to go to the other side of the button and do that end And just tie it off and you can do this however you want to do this get nice good knots in there so that it's nice and secure you can even add some glue in there if you want to but be careful because you want to be able to put your your loop there so I'm just tying a few more knots and then we're gonna finish off so I'm gonna tie this off and I'll be back okay so I'm gonna cut this off here finish that off and we move on from there so it's not too tight because you need for your loop to go through let's give that a test and it slides in and that's it so it should work perfect for little hands it's very easy to get on to that button there's the back and so now let's go ahead and continue 
we're going to continue with the strap again i was going to do a granny square strap but i just really didn't you know i, I didn't like how that looked um remember to put a border around your flap there um, so now I'm going to make another stitch and I'm going to chain 10. Actually, it's 11 and then you're going to skip that first chain and go ahead and single crochet across so you can have 10 single crochets. And that's all we're going to do is just make 10 single crochets, um, make as many rows as you want to. That part is completely up to you. So just continue on making your rows, make it as long as you want. I'm not going to make mine too long because this is just for the tutorial and I don't have a little one. So um, I'm going to continue and I'll be back. Okay, so now I have about 50 rows. I'm going to do a decrease. So chain one and turn your work. Remember, a decrease is go into your stitch, pull up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch, and then pull through all three. And make one, two single crochets. And now in the last two, you're gonna decrease again. chain one and turn your work and now just make a row of single crochets and we're going to decrease for a couple of rows because I want to have a nice point on the end of there you can decrease as many rows as you like so I will finish this and I'll be okay so I'm at the very end and I'm going to do a decrease with these last two stitches so I can have one single crochet at the end. And then I will do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to cut this off and then do the same thing on the other end. Remember you're starting off with 10 double crochets and then you will make a row of double crochets and then decrease from there. So I'm going to do the other side and I'll be back. I can't believe that you came into my life. You made me feel again. Now it's my turn. You say you've always been a little bit shy. But I can put an end to your fears. Let me show you a place where you go on a move. Start to bleed DJ take it Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this off. Now we're going to attach our handle or our strap, sorry, <laughs> to the sides. I'm loving how this came out. I think I'm going to think of another stitch to add to this top, but you see how that button goes. Please excuse this here. I had some paint on my hand and got it on my daggone thingamajig. Anyway, so now we're going to go ahead and sew on these sides. It's very simple. If you know how to sew, then you can go ahead and go in. Um, I did, I I think I put the edge at the fifth row. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this in. And let's listen to some music. I can't believe that you came into 
some knots. I am big on knots, especially when it comes to children. And I'm also going to add some super glue just to make sure that it doesn't come out. So I'm going to put a couple of knots in here. Make sure you pull good and tight and snip off that excess. And now I'm going to add some crazy glue. So just right on top of that knot. You don't want to put too much. I mean, don't get crazy with it. But just put enough so that not that knot is secure and you know it's not going to come out um, you want to especially do this for the little ones because they can be quite rough with their things so just let that dry and go ahead and do the other side i'm just going to slide this button in here as you can see it's very easy it's not too tight and not too loose and it's nice and secure so now let's go ahead and work on the other side of this strap here. I'm going to do this really quickly um, and then I'm going to come back. When I come back, I'll have a picture of the purse. Okay, so here she is. I went ahead and added that heart there. I just glued it right to the button. So um, uh, she'll still be able to go ahead and take it off without any issues the heart will not get in the way so thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe follow me on facebook instagram and tiktok at cam tie handmade crochet bye bye